Let's try not to talk too much about stuff that's not the word but here we go. I start I wanted to start a little bit of a series a while back called the Apostolic Letters. There's some fancy word, but look, Peter wrote letters, John wrote letters, Jude wrote letters, James wrote letters, Paul wrote letters, the disciples wrote letters. And the letters that they wrote gave commentary or further understanding about the gospel. So I've said this before, but I want to say it one more time. Almost every word sometimes in my mind when I read these letters is literally dripping with new covenant truth. What does that mean? Jesus brought in the new covenant. When he died on the cross, he gave us new life. And literally, I believe that the words used in the letters are like no other type of writings. And you can literally, I said it a while back, grab one of these words if you could. Look, look spiritually. You could grab one of these words and you could squeeze it into that glass and you'd end up with just the water of truth, if that makes sense. I'm trying to give you an analogy. So what we're going to try to do is, I don't even know if you can see this. If you have your physical Bibles during the first Peter, because you may not be able to see all of this, but I'm trying to make a point that I'm going to try to go according to a paragraph. All right? Now listen, you've got to understand something. Paragraphs are not in the original language. The Greek language did not have any punctuation and they did not have any divisions. The translators do paragraphs based upon <coughs> thoughts within a paragraph unit is a common thought that's going on. We're going to try to capture the thought, but I need you to also see these words. Amen. I'm going to also on our website, I don't even know what our website is. What, does anybody know what our website is? We've been having a website forever. I'm going to put it on Facebook. Do you know the name of the website? Our website, Agna Ao. Okay, you need to put that on Facebook so they can find it. Because we're going to start uploading these notes on on the website. And if you want to grab, like this is my study notes for this. If you want it, you don't have to have it. But I'm also going to start trying to get some notes. Some people like to write, like some of you old school people from old past <laughs> brands. I like to write on stuff. And I got a way that I feel like the Lord is going to give it to me. We're going to try to upload those before the service. That way, if you want to go on there and print it, because I, I try. I don't have time. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend my time printing because I'll copy it because a lot of times people don't really want it. They see you want it. It'll be there waiting for you. And you can just press and print on your computer and bring it to church with you if you want. Okay? So I'm just trying to help out. That's all. All right. So here we go. First Peter. So look, this is the first paragraph. It's verses 1 and 2. I titled this message. I titled this message right here, A Temporary Journey with Eternal Reward. This chapter, I'm going to preach this whole chapter this morning. God's going to give me the grace to do it and also to not frustrate you. I'm going to preach this whole chapter this morning. And guess what? That is an essence of what we're looking at. This is a temporary journey that has an eternal reward. I need to help you get your head right, my friend. You're in a temporary state of mind and there is an eternal reward that awaits you if indeed you truly are a child of the living king. Amen? Amen. So look, here we go. Let's read the first paragraph. Peter, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. I could have literally highlighted every word. But if you can see, I did highlight strangers, elect, sanctification, and the sprinkling of blood. So what I want you to see is that these words in this first paragraph, in this first thought, are going to drive the thought. And what I need you to know is, is that the word stranger can also be used synonymously with pilgrim. I need you to know Peter also says the word soldier. What does a pilgrim and what does a sojourner do? He is on a travel. He's taking a trip. And in reality, he's in the midst of an expedition. He's not just a traveler, but he's like a cool archaeologist. And he's going along the way. And he's trying to find out answers in the world that he's living in. Because it's within the text we're going to see it. That we're digging for a treasure, my friend. Once you have been born again from the dead, the Bible says that you have been translated into a new king. Have you been born again this morning? I hope you've been born again, child of God. I hope you've been born again from the dead. So listen, we're strangers or pilgrims upon this earth. 
But we are the elect of God. That word elect literally means chosen out. You're the chosen out ones. What, what do you reckon you were chosen out of? You were chosen out of the world. You were chosen out of the world. You see, God has a plan. And this whole world of people has been born in Adam. And, and, the, and the world has been born in sin in their physical birth. And that's why it requires a second birth. It requires a second birth from God that will give you new life and new hope. Now, the sprinkling of blood, sanctification. What does the word sanctification mean? It means to be made holy and it means to be separated. Amen? So as the elect of God, you have been made holy in Christ and you have been separated from the world. Listen, if you haven't been born again yet, it may be difficult to understand some of these concepts. But just trust me when I'm telling you this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, Paul said it, all that calls itself Jew is not Jew. And the Lord showed me all that calls itself Christian is not Christian. Right, right. I'm not the Holy Spirit. It's not my job to determine who is the elect and who is not. It's not my job to determine who's living their lives like a pilgrim and who is not. That is the Holy Spirit's work. My work is to tell you the truth for the way it's written. The truth says you're a stranger if you're in Christ. You're a pilgrim on a journey. The truth says you're the chosen out ones. The truth says that you are sanctified. And how did you become the elect? How did you become sanctified? How did you become chosen out through the sprinkling of blood? We went back and we said it before. I'm not trying to get too deep. I'm going to let you know, though, the ashes of the red heifer. Yes. Comes out of the book of Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't even have time to go back and look, but you can look it up for yourself. And you can Google search it, whatever the case. And you can find the scriptures that talk about the ashes of the red heifer. And in the ashes of the red heifer, the blood was contained within the animal sacrifice and the whole carcass was burned with the blood included. And those ashes then would create a heap of ashes. And for many, many years, they would just take a little pinch and they would put it in cleansing water. They would stir it. Then they would use the water to sprinkle it with a type of the sacrifice of Jesus that would come to cleanse and to purge even the conscience. Even the mindset. Yeah. See, that's a work of the cross that can actually purge even your mind. God, what Jesus has done at the cross can heal your mind. He can bring deliverance to your thought process. The power of the cross can change your thinking. Hallelujah. He can bring that sneaking thinking and can bring you a glorious thought from on high. Think on these. Things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pure and holy yeah. and taking every imagination captive under the authority oh, of Jesus Christ, oh, the eternal Lamb of God. So that's who you are. You're a pilgrim. Did you know that? Amen. You're a pilgrim in a foreign land. I want you to know that this morning. All right, that was point number one. Now we're in verses three through five. It's the next thought. Verses three through five. This is the thought on verses 3 through 5. This is the thought I was given this morning. Eternal life. Eternal kingdom. Eternal reward. Eternal life. Eternal kingdom. Eternal reward. I want to, I want to remind you that this earth is not eternal. This earth is temporary. It's going to be burnt up. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. The glory of the Lord is already upon this earth with the glory of the Lord. The atmosphere of the millennial reign of Christ is going to be the complete opposite of what we see today. Hallelujah. The glory of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, my God. Oh, the glory. Yes. The presence of the Lord. Yes. The presence of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Whenever our King rules upon the throne of David, what a glorious so I just read it, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fades not away. Reserved in heaven for you. For you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I didn't even highlight kept by the power of God, but we'll probably have to talk about it. That's what I'm trying to say. Every word is dripping. Every word is ready for the extraction of treasure. It's uh -huh. hidden in there. Amen? Oh, yeah. Amen. Listen, what I want you to understand first off is the word begotten. Literally means to give birth to. God the Father gave birth to a new people group. Now listen, you got to understand this plan was in place. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because the scripture actually bears it out. This plan was in place from the beginning of time. Nothing upon this earth is catching our God by surprise. He already knows what is going on. But I need you to understand that as we elect through the sprinkling of blood, God has begotten you. But it's not just the sprinkling of blood, brothers and sisters. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let me say that again. It's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ from the dead. The same spirit that raised yeah. him from the yeah. dead will also quicken yeah. your mortal body. You don't have to walk around here like a dead man anymore right. because not only is the old man dead, yeah. but the new man, hallelujah, the new man is alive in Christ. Oh, 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 oh. He is seated in Christ and he's positioned in heavenly yeah, places. Yeah. That's where you are right now. You and I right now are seated in Christ in heavenly places. In the mind of God, this thing is done and it is complete. He is just leaving pilgrims on the earth to journey it out with lamps in their heart. And he wants the lamps to burn bright, Christian. He wants the oil of the presence to burn bright in the light of God in the midst of darkness. So that the people out there will know that there is a God in heaven that loves them. And in order for us to be able to show that light, we don't have to have resurrection power. Yeah. Listen to me. I ask the system that cleans not to erase it. But that's my bad. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been saying this. I've been saying this for a while, but listen, I want you to see the I want you to see the picture. We're teaching the Bible this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Teach us your word, That's great right. interpreter of scripture. Amen. We need revelation and understanding Amen. of your redemptive work. Yes, Hallelujah. You need to understand that there's two sides to the cross. The Lord showed me this many, many years ago, and I'm not backing off of this, my friend. We're bringing the resurrection back into the Christ event. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. It was a foregone conclusion. It was the debt had been paid in the mind of God. Right. Death could not hold him down. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the unleavened, sinless one sent from heaven, the bread of heaven. He had no sin. Therefore, death had no right to hold him down. Therefore, the resurrection the grip of the death had no hold on him. He busted out of that tomb on the third day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He lives in me. That's the resurrection. Yes. Hallelujah. There's a dead side to the cross, my yes. friend. The old man born in Adam. When you get saved and you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit puts you in the Christ. And in the mind of God, you die with the Christ. And in the mind of God, you are buried with the Christ in the tomb. But ho! Sometimes we don't like it when we hear something certain. Oh, yeah. We need a little clarification. Mm -hmm. 
Get your mind off your own sinful man. Mm. Oh, we don't like it when we first come. Oh, you were, but, but, I'm, but I am a sinner saved by grace. Yeah, you were. You were. You were. You were. Kids. Amen. You were. You were a sinner saved by grace, but now you are a saint of God. You are a Judah came the cross. 
Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. And you have redeemed and sprinkled with your blood and made a new man, hallelujah, to serve you. And you desire to give an eternal Thank you, Lord. It's eternal. Waiting for you. Yes. Waiting. Thank you, Let us Hallelujah. consecrate our vessels. Yes. Let us be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Let us see more manifestations oh, of the Holy Spirit, not the manifestations of Satan. And people's lives will be changed. Yes. Amen. And people will buy Amen. That they too would become part mm. of yes. the Word of God. Power. Oh, God. Next thought, verses 6 through 9. Shrink this down a little bit. Next thought, verses 6 through 9. Hallelujah. You ready? This is the thought, 6 through 9. Oh, Hostile journey. Y'all ready? Hostile journey. Faith must be tried. Yes. Kingdom currency. Kingdom currency is faith. It must be tried. Let me just clarify that for a second. Somebody was saying the other day, man, the currency of the kingdom must be the blood of Jesus. Yeah, the currency of redemption is the blood of Jesus. You're not going to be redeemed with corruptible things. Let me not get ahead of myself. The blood, the eternal blood of the righteous land is the currency that redeemed you. But listen to me. If we're doing exchange, if we're doing spiritual exchange, my friend, is based on faith. Amen. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. Of faith Amen. will get the hand of God moving. My sister Brenda said it was so good. You go to reverence God for without faith is an impiety. It is impossible to please God. For he that is going to come to God must believe that he is. If we fast, we believe he will respond. If we pray, we believe he hears and responds. If we believe in that he's going to show up in church, we show up in church. We believe that God is real. And we believe that he is worthy of glory and honor. And we give we lift up holy hands. And we use our lips. We use our lips to glorify our king. Yeah. And we don't let the devil keep our fanny in our seat. All right now. We get up and we bring our offering to the Lord. We get up and we bring our offering on our knees to the Lord. We serve God because we are the people of God. And the seed of God has been planted on the inside of our heart. Hallelujah. What are you saying, preacher? I need to go walk in the parade? And no, that's my job because God told me to do that. Amen. You don't have to do one other thing other than what God's telling you to do. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. But when you talk, that's right. 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 Come on. who has ears to hear, hear. let him hear let what him the Spirit says Look. to the church. <laughs> Give his ears to you. Hallelujah. All right. So look at these words. Rejoice, heaviness, the trial of your faith. Tried by fire. You see him not in the grief, wherein you greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more Precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Can you feel that right there? I didn't even, I don't think I even highlighted that. But can you feel that in your spirit? Yeah. 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 Say that. Say that yeah. with me. Rejoice yeah. with joy. Unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. Yeah. Oh, I can't see him yet. Yeah. But I know that he's there. Yeah. And I'm going to rejoice yeah. with joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. And then we deposit his spirit in your heart. Not please. Yes. I believe he has deposited his spirit in your heart. Yes. And maybe through decisions that we make, yeah. through hurts because of other people, but your dirt, we put a dirt, we put dirt in there. Yeah. Oh Lord, remove the dirt. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Remove the dirt, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Remove it because yeah. it's trying to prevent those living waters from Come on. freely flowing. Say it. Yeah. Say remove it. the dirt. Oh, remove the dirt. Lord, right now, the power of the Holy Ghost, speak to your people. 
evil Lord and pinpoint those things in our heart and in our life that you desire to purge and cleanse it's you and you alone you're the only one that can remove it Lord you and you alone Holy Spirit remove it Yes, remove. Remove it from us, Lord. We yield ourselves. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 All right. Rejoice. It's exaltation. Pure joy. I think of the, the passage that says whenever Abraham saw the day of the Lord, Jesus said he saw it and rejoiced. <laughs> and that word literally means I'm not going to try to do it. I've tried to do it before, but I'm getting older. He was twisting and turning in the air. I'd imagine that's why y'all dancing was dancing. Oh, my goodness. I, I just see him. But it was like a man. It didn't look like a man. They were slaying the lion, my friend. He was agile. He was bad. Look, Lord. But it was the Spirit of God. Amen. Look, can you see him dancing? Exaltation with a you. Exaltation to exalt the exalted one. Hallelujah. Yes. Joy Amen. unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. Yes. Even though now for first season, if need be, you might experience heaviness, yep. grief, sorrow. Yes. I don't like that preaching preacher. Yep. You probably also don't like the world, or maybe you do still like the world. That you oh, really like that. That's a problem. Because that's going to create more heaviness. <laughs> it's going to prevent you from being oh. able to experience the exile. Right. It's going to prevent you from being able to experience the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because if you still love this world and the things of this world, then the love of the Father is not in you. That's right. right. That's right. Not I did not write that. His name was John. He was the beloved of the Lord. He laid his head upon the chest of Jesus. Yes, he did. He walked with him. He talked with him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The heaviness, manifold, many types of temptations and trials. But look. That the trial of your faith, which is much more precious than gold. See, gold perishes. The earth perishes. Your eternal reward is not going to perish. But the things on this earth are in the bits of decay. Right. Yes. Right. Your faith is not temporal. Let me say it again. Your faith is not temporary. Your faith is eternal. Yes. Your faith brought you into defect. Oh, he's getting too deep. The definite article is talking about a noun. Listen, don't let me lose you, Christian. Don't let me lose you because a noun is not that difficult of a thing to understand. <laughs> And I'm not being trying to say it. I'm saying it. Yep. People say, oh, he gets way too deep. No, 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 we ain't getting deep enough because a man on an expedition in a temporary journey is looking for a treasure. Come on. And he's looking for a treasure. Come on, Come on and say it. He keeps digging. Yeah. And he keeps digging yes. until he hits the honey hole, my friend, until he finds what he's been looking for. It was a pearl of great price. And he rejected all else because he had to have that pearl. It's like the kingdom. Buy that field because he wanted that track. Yeah, so yeah. listen, faith, the faith is a noun. Faith is a verb. I was going to say this the other day, but I don't think I ever did. God has given you some measure of faith, and He wants you to use your birth faith to bring you into deep right. Come on. Right. He wants to keep you in deep faith. Yeah. Uh, another way to say deep faith is in the Christ. It's a place where you abide, my friend. Yes. You don't kind of like go visit every now and then. No, you abide in Christ. Yes. You sit down, you settle down, and then and you seat it in Christ, and you learn what it means to walk with Him, and to live with Him, and to journey with Him on this great expedition. And listen, I wasn't planning on getting into this. This isn't even in my notes. But guess what? This right here, what is this? It's another kind of word. Faithfulness. What would you say that kind of word is? Bridget, can you help us out? What kind of word is that? Is it, is it, is it an adverb? I think it's an adjective. Mm -hmm. It describes. Yes. Yes. Hey. So, verb faith brought you into deep faith, and now in deep faith, you, the vessel of God, become a faithful one. 
as the Holy Spirit empowered you to live above the realm of sin through the blood that was shed and the response of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to live above sin. And he works based off of the finished work of the eternal Lamb of God, the sprinkling of blood, the cleansing yes. of the Lamb. Oh, Ain't no devil in hell got you, my friend. Come on. If the devil in hell got you, you like the way that hook feels. Uh -huh. oh, they don't like that kind of preaching. That's the they don't like that kind of preaching, but guess what? The people of God love it. Amen. The people of God love it because it shows them where they're wrong yes. and Holy Spirit convict our hearts. Yes. Ain't nobody don't like no hook in their mouth and no hook in Nose. Boy, go read in the second Chronicles, man. They took that king back, back to Babylon. Yeah, ouch. Ooh, ouch. Oh, ouch. Yeah, mercy. <laughs> I don't want the devil to put no hook in my hand. Amen. I am not his no slave. Way. I'm a bond slave of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Look, but in the meantime, your faith must be tried. Let me tell you why, because your faith is not temporal. Your faith is not perishing. Your faith is eternal because it's your faith that brought you into the faith and the faith will endure. And one day you're going to see your king of glory. Yes. God ain't playing games. Come on. Oh, they got preachers behind. I'm kicking on my body. I'm just trying to tell you right now. Listen, this is what the word of God says. The word of God says in the last days, some are going to depart from the faith and you're going to give heed to seduce the spirits and not come from yeah. them. That's right. People in the Old Testament were giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine to the devils. In Jeremiah chapter 5, the Lord said, My, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear a role according to their own authority. Mm -hmm. And my people love it so. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. Lord, help us. Oh, it's like this Houston yes, love yes. the prophets that prophesy falsely. Help us to your people. Lord, help me not to be a priest. That would go according to my own authority, my own mm -hmm. heavy weight. Yes. Help yes. us to be a people that yes. do not want to engage in doctrines of death. Come on, yes. Yes. Just to feel good. Yes. Let me tell you something. Yes. Yes. The yes. Bible says that he presents himself as an angel of light. Yes. That's it. Let us study the scriptures. Holy yes. Spirit, give us the unction yes. and the from the Holy yes. One and let us know all the truth of the Lord. We yes. need us, Holy Spirit. Right? I'm tired of being critical, but I will. I refuse not to tell the truth. Amen. Amen. The trial of your faith being much more precious than the gold that perishes, wow. it must be tried. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 4. We're not going to turn there, but I'm going to tell you. Proverbs 25, verse 4. We're talking about trial of by fire. See, the word in the Greek right here for the trial has to do with proving something. When you put metal to proof, you apply fire to it. It's certainly called a refiner's fire. Yes. When you put the fire to it, and you heat it up and up. And I've seen my brother-in-law used to make tea. My brother-in-law Bill used to make tea. And I'd go in there and he had like a little, a little, I don't know if you call it a mini cauldron or whatever, but he'd heat it up. He'd put the gold in one section and he'd heat it up. And, and, and he'd heat it till it glowed until it became molten. And it, and it was in this spinning centrifugal thing. And then he closed the thing and he, he hit a button and it, and it would throw the molten metal travel into the wax mold and it would form a, a gold crown or some kind of a metal crown, and then there would be leftover stuff that was still in the old spot, and that was the dross. Dross is the impurities, because you see, gold is never completely pure. Metals are never completely pure. There's impurities in there. So the refiner's fire, if you go to Proverbs 25, 4, you know, today, sometime tomorrow, no, let's go now. <laughs> Proverbs 25 4. This is King James. Take away the dross from the silver, there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Now, look, you would think, oh, a finer vessel. Let me go ahead and click that up. 
a for a vessel for the fighter, but that's not what it's saying. We've got to go look at another translation. Maybe let's just look at ESV right here. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has the material for a vessel. Who was the smith? He's the blacksmith. He's the, he's the artisan that works with the metal. And some translations, the idea would be he's finally getting some material that's going to make a vessel that's worthy of his use. Ooh. See, he knows. You understand that? The smith knows what's in the metal. And somebody comes to him and they want to make an exchange. And they're like, look, I'm going to give you some money. I need you to make me a metal vessel. Okay. <clears throat> so he makes the metal vessel. But that's not good enough. Yeah. See, they don't have enough money to pay for what he makes. So he's going to prepare a vessel and he knows what's in that vessel. Got it right here. I need to use it. I got it right here. And I got to tell you something. Child of God, then this is what God wants to do when He brings consecration and when He brings purification to our vessel. That yes, in the mind of God, we're already purified in Christ, the blood of Jesus has been sprinkled upon us. But if you're gonna sit here and pretend, listen, that old way of thinking, that old way of thinking when we were just hiding, tucked up under the blanket of justification, where we understood that we were free and we were innocent in Christ. Yes, this is truth. Hold on to it. Never let it go. Be like a bulldog on a bone. Don't let nobody take that from you. But listen to me. The Lord wants to consecrate our vessels. He wants purity. He wants holiness. And the only way that that's going to happen is when we cry out to him and we say we want more. We want more. And we want to be right with you, O oh Lord. Amen? Yes. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So, so listen, the, the, the refiner is making a vessel that's going to be worthy of his use. Don't you want to be a vessel that's worthy of his use? Yes. Amen. I believe that. I can yeah. see it in your life, Y'all yeah. want God to use you. Amen. Yeah. Well, look, so the trial of his faith is it's, it's eternal. It's not temporal. It, it must be tried by fire. And, and look, you know, another thing, too. Well, let's just keep going because it's going to be in here. So try to faith by fire, right? And look, you see him not yet, you still believe. Mm -hmm. You know the beauty? Could you imagine being a friend with Peter or a friend with John? Because Peter's going to say in one of these spots when we get to it, he's going to say, we're not telling you a, a, a cunningly devised fable, my friend. Come on. <laughs> Peter wrote it in the letter. You know, there's been times that I've done street ministry, and I've told some of y'all this before. I go hand him a track, hey man, I just want to tell you about Jesus. He's like, Jesus, dude, really? Man, go ahead, dude. My mom would tell me about Santa Claus, and he used her buddy, too. <laughs> That's what he told me. Hallelujah. Right. I'm like, yeah, but I'm here to tell you, brother, what they're even facing. That's right, yeah. Mama might have lied to you about Santa Claus. That's right. Did he just say that? Yes, yes, he did. The preacher just said that. Come on. Your mommy might have lied to you about Santa Claus. Come on. Satan's claw. Come on, yes. say that. Satan's cause. Yeah, that's it. Anything that takes glory away from my Jesus, I have no room for this Amen. anymore. Man. Your mommy might have lied to you about the Easter bunny, the goddess Ishtar, and her fertility eggs. But it was so sweet. Mm. We loved painting those eggs. <laughs> we all did. Yeah. But now that we know, it's time to go. <laughs> That's, right. That's, right. That's right. Oh, just go and get a bead at the parade, preacher. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5 says that one of the lusts of the flesh is revelry. That's right. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. His name is above every name. His name is above Hephaestus. His name is above Galatea. His name is above Zeus. And God says, His name is the name under which men must be saved. Hallelujah. No glory for other gods. Come on now, say it. That's right. No, oh, that's not what I don't want to hear you. Oh, come on. Voice of error. <laughs> you bought into the voice of error, my friend. I am not here to water down this gospel anymore. Amen. 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 The days are dark. 9 yes. 11 changed the world. COVID, what in the world, dude? Everybody's under an oppressive attack. That's right. Because of this lying. <laughs> 
Do you believe all this humbug? What else are we going to call this? Do you believe this garbage? Do you out there in video land believe this garbage? I do not believe it anymore! Is it a virus? Yes, it's a virus. Where did it come from? I'm not going to sit here and waste time on this. I'm telling you, we are under a demonic attack on this earth. The spirit of oppression is trying to kill people about their That's right. That's right. And there's an event coming. Come on. Whether you hear or not, I don't know because I don't know when it's coming, but I feel it in my bones. And the next time the spirit of oppression comes upon the face of the earth, you better really, really stop and think. Listen to me. You better stop and think. The wickedness of our adversary, the wiles of our enemy, the trickery and the methods and his schemes and his devices are above our understanding without the word of God, without the Holy Spirit giving us understanding and revelation, we would be undone. Oh, Jesus, help us. Yes. Yes. Help us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Your faith must be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yep. Salvation. Look at this. Let's read this. This is, just, this is verses 10 through 12. Of which salvation, well, look, let's just go ahead and go back to here. 10 through 12. This is what I'm saying here. Eternal plan, unchanging message. <coughs> Eternal plan, unchanging message. Because at the end of verse 9, you're talking about salvation. I didn't even highlight that. Lord, forgive me, but how can I extract every word? Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. You want to talk about a man on an expedition? That's what the idea is. They're digging, they're craving, they're demanding answers. I don't know what it looks like in your prayer room, but some of us, whenever we get together to pray, whether it's here, there, whatever, and again, we've been, oh, I'm craving your truth, Lord. Yeah. Find the treasures. Show us, Lord, your will. Show us your word, O oh, interpreter of Scripture. Let us see. Let us see. We got Bible study at Father. Let us see, O oh Lord, let us see. Open up your word. Help us. They search diligently. Thank you. Imagine the fall. Oh, can you imagine the life of Can you imagine Jeremiah weeping? Prophet praying to God. Because he's so wicked and adulterous generation. Cheating on the Lord and God. They got a share of poles in the temple of God. I don't even want to talk about that. They got the male phallus in the temple of God. They got a cult magic in the church of God. And they're worshiping other gods. And they're calling him Yahweh. You can't eat at the table with demons. Come on. So Say that. All right. Yeah. You can't even partake with both of those. Jesus. Right. You can't fellowship at the table of demons and fellowship with the Lord. The prophets inquired. They asked the questions. They searched. They thought. For what? Well, let, let's just read. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it, what was in the Spirit of Christ, testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53. Go back and read it. Take the note, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53. The suffering of the Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom, who is it? Them, the prophets. It was revealed. That not unto themselves, but unto us. Mm. Us. Yep. Who is us? Mm. New Testament Christians. Yep. New Covenant Christians. Yep. The elect of God. Those sprinkled with blood. Those born again and begotten of God through the resurrection of the Lamb. Hallelujah. 
They, 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 it was for us. Did they minister these things, which are now reported unto you? Been reported for the last 2,000 years. I'm trying to report it right now. I'm trying to report it right now by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things angels desire to look into. Boy, we've been talking about that a lot lately. Angels just don't get it, my friend. There's two classes of angels. Bad ones and good ones. Ones that are going to be eternal in the presence of God and cry, Holy, Holy, Holy. And those that are like serpents swirling around in a nest of snakes, brood of vipers, malicious malcontents full of wickedness and evil, seeds of Satan trying to implant the mind, the heart of human beings, deception and lies to pull people away from the truth. Those are the only kind of two angels there. And the ones in heaven appear through the portals of the Lord. I can hear and listen to me. That's right. Whenever you're in your bed at night, <coughs> He's trying to attack. He's trying to make you feel lonely. He's trying to tempt you and tell you that what you really need is another man to hold you in your hands. To tell you what you really need is another woman to hold you in her arms. And he speaks those in the whispers, those little lies, whispers. You know, I can't handle them. You single women that think that's what you need, that's not true. Come on. Amen. Amen. You need the love of your soul. Come on. Yeah. You. Yeah. you need to get alone with him. You need to learn about this man. Yeah. You need to get right And you get to the point because you can find the light. Yeah. And I see those nights of darkness, those nights of loneliness, those nights of temptation, those manifold temptations and trials that are here that God allows. He does. I'm sorry. He allows them to test the faith, to put it through the fire. Amen. Because, because listen. In that temporal and perishing and incorruptible and corruptible <laughs> to get into the kingdom of God. Jesus. That's right. it's my mm. But I see that when these temptations and these trials are going on, I can hear the angels. Yeah. They're talking, he tell I believe it. I'm just, I'm, I can't prove it. They're peering through the pools. That's right. right. And I know I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not paying. That's right. Don't listen to that mighty devil. Yeah, don't you do it, man. Yeah. No, don't you do it. Come on. Come on. Lord, give us the word, Holy Spirit. Dispatch us into this situation right now. They're tearing over. I can hear them talking about Job. Job, don't do it. Don't curse God. Don't curse God. Don't listen to you. My God. Yes. Come on. Don't listen to your friend. Amen. Amen. Mm. It's a trial. No, it's a bad one. It's rough. It's temporary, though. That's right. You're going to make it, Job. Hold on. That's right. Hold on, Job. That's right. Amen. That's it. <laughs> the words that stuck out to me, the prophets inquired and searched. They prophesied of grace. They prophesied of a certain time. They prophesied of the spirit of the Christ. Who was it for? It was for you. It was for me. It was for New Testament saints, my friend. And it's more for us today than it was yesterday. Yes, amen. And the spirit of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, is speaking a message of truth. And this is the time. This is the time. There used to be a song. It's time. Time for the dead to rise. I don't even know the words. It's not time for the dead. It's time. It's time for the dead. I was just praying in that room. And I think Angie may be preaching on this coming up. About the old dead dry bones. Go back and read, right. read that story. Right. Zeke was yeah. ready for her message. I think it's next week. All right. Come on, Angie. You're about to read some fire. We didn't show up. My friend is on this next Sunday. Oh, I hear those bones rattling.
They preach that gospel with the Holy Ghost. Boy, them angels sure are curious about it. <laughs> they want us to win, my friend. The good ones. The good ones want us to win, and I can't even begin to tell you how much the bad ones hate you. They hate you so much. Destroy and kill you. Thirteen through sixteen. Let me give it. Prepare for travel. Get your mind right. Prepare for travel. Get your mind right. Here we go. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. I used to be ignorant, man. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. You know, you go to the parade. Bring my little girl. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, look, I'm trying to tell you. Bacchus wants the place in your heart. Hephaestus wants the place in your heart. You get the point. Come on. As a boy, your children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Okay. I mean, just look, going to the bar every now and then is not that big of a deal if I'm still going to church at least once a week. Taking a man home and sleeping with him every now and then is not that big of a deal. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. You're such a, oh my gosh, you're so like an old school preacher. You're like, dude, you weird, bro. This is 2023, man. This is YOLO time. We, you only live once. Yeah, you only live once and you're going to die twice. And I'll die. Die. So if you do not hold on to Jesus, you're going to die the second death at the great white throne judgment because your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Help us. You don't want me to wander this down. They got a thousand other channels and a thousand other places where you can do that. <laughs> Oh, but as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy. Be holy. I am. I am. What does that word conversation mean? It means lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Your speech should also be holy. Right. So if you love God, if you've been begotten of God, if the Spirit of God is sanctifying you, Shame on you if you say that for her. Yep. Mm. Amen. Shame on you if you are using other types of cuss words. That's right. Mm. Preach it. Amen. Shame on you. That's right. Yes. Shame on me. Yes. I'm not saying that to beat you up. You think I never thought of bad words since I've been a Christian? Come on, man. I'm the least, I'm the cheapest of sinners. <laughs> Saved by grace. Amen. A saint of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Change me, Lord. <laughs> right? Lord. You gotta change me, man. Yes, yes. nobody but God. I want Him to change me. Holy mm. Spirit, do Your work. Yes, yes. Send in that cleansing yes. wave of grace. Yes. Change me, Lord. All right, you get the point. Listen, let's go back to some of this right here, though. I want you to see some of these words. Gird up your loins of your mind. Listen, you go to Ephesians chapter six, verse fourteen. It talks about the belt of truth. I don't really have time to where I could probably do it. But I would probably try to do it anyway. Because look, let's just pretend that this is your garment. Okay? This is your garment. And you was a, you was a, you was a New Testament person alive during the time of Jesus. And this is what you wear. I don't know. It looks something like this. It's kind of like a long flowing robe. You probably have to give Miss Cheryl to fix you up. But it is something like that probably. And, and then there would be a little bit of a belt. There, well, now, the officer, the soldier would have a, a true belt. That's what Paul's saying in Ephesians. But you still would have like a little rope or something to gather. But for if you're a soldier and you're about to go to war, say, now you got to gird up your loins. Because sometimes when you're a soldier, you got to run. All right, now. So what they would do is <laughs> they would pull <laughs> the backside of this garment and they tuck it up under that, that belt of truth. Because they gird up their loins yeah. with truth. Yeah. Because they're about to have to go running, run through the camp, and tell everybody, hey, hey, get ready! Gird up the loins of truth. Yeah. We're right here with your mind. Because look, you're on a journey in your mind. The spirit of error 
It's trying to get a hold of your mind. Yeah. And this is the breastplate of righteousness which you received from the darling of heaven that died and, and bled for you and you received him through faith. And now you got the breastplate of righteousness. This is what makes you part of what makes you different in the world, friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The belt of truth secures it. Yeah. Keeps it in place. Because whenever you're on this journey, the spirit of error is trying to convince you. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. The spirit of error is trying to convince you yeah. that their way is the right way, your way is the wrong way. Right, right. Oh, it's normal to be transgender. You fool. Hmm. You fool. You scientific liar. That's right. That is not normal behavior. That's right. That's right. That is the most preposterous, ridiculous, unthinkable, unholy, ridiculous, ridiculous garbage. And you want me to believe that. And you think I'm dumb? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Spirit of error. You've been lying, governments. Oh, let, let, let me know. That's what I'm going to be saying when I think I'm walking. Huh? <laughs> 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 I ain't never been in like that. I ain't never been in for that. I'm going to just wait for my problem. <laughs> 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 Trembling. 
You better not let the enemy tempt you to go back to smoking dope. Back to looking at pornography. Back, you, the Lord wants to set you free from those bondages of the lust of the flesh that want to hold you down. He wants to free you. But look, once you've been free, you don't want to go back like a dog to his vomit. Oh, no. Get your nose out of that, you crazy dog. What are you doing, right? I'm talking to my dog. I see it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I do love that dog. I, yeah. I, I do not understand. Anyway, really, this, this is the word. And if you call on the Father without so turning to you, look, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. Corruptible means it's perishing. You, you, are you seeing the, the repeated pattern here? The earth that we live on is perishing, it's corrupted. The faith that we have is eternal. It is not corrupted. It's going to be tried by fire. We're on a journey. We're walking with God. Amen. And listen, you were not redeemed with corruptible things that are perishing. Gold perishes because it's from the earth. People say it's valuable. But it's going to perish. Come on, because right. the earth is going to perish. Mm, that's right. Because the earth is going to be burned up with fires. And there's going to be a new heaven. Come new on, earth. say it. That's what the Bible that's says. That's what the Bible says. I you. believe it. That's Amen. Right. I'm convinced. I don't understand how he's going to do it. I don't understand if he's just going to quit talking. And then atoms are going to quit being coalesced. And everything's going to be... I don't know how he's going to do it. But he's going to do it. Yes. That's right. And when he does it. I want to be on the right hey, side of the line. I'm telling you right now. Mm. I had two occurrences the other day. It was just a young couple in one of the rooms at the clinic. And they didn't even ask one thing. But I told them, I said, listen to me, my friend. There's a line going to be drawn in the sands. And all this Illuminati humbug and all this music here. She said, somebody was about to make a choice. Come on now. And you need to understand something. You may not even know what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to tell you Jesus is real. They didn't even ask for this. I ain't gonna take, I don't care anymore. I told, I told the nurse at the hospital the other day, dude, I do not care anymore. Mm -hmm. This world is dark and we're all mm -hmm. acting like something happened. That's right. Start, somebody start talking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I gave him a year full of things. He's like, well, ready. And I said, and you can go right now. And if you do, maybe they'll find me. Guess what? They ain't better than you. Hey. I'm gonna try to be ah. disrespectful. I said, so I'm gonna pay for the year old one. Mm. By the grace of God, you'll be fitting. But this is what I want to say. And if you're watching, Pastor, um, <laughs> there's a pastor that's been coming in and out of the clinic for the last 26 years. I watched his children grow up. Now he has grandchildren that he brings. He had me preach at this church one time, a long, long time ago, by a preacher, like a Baptist church in Fountain Gibson. I preached up there like 20, I don't know, that year that I was going around all these churches before we had a church, I think it was in there. 13, I don't know how long there. But in the room, I said, oh, Pastor, God's moving in here. He's shaking stuff up, brother. And I said, let me tell you what the Lord told me. I said, the Lord showed me you think his bad son is a health care provider and you just diagnose someone who hurt them physically. They're an overseer of the soul. I knew what the Lord said, church. I read it. A little granddaughter walks over there and like, <laughs> so anyway, he cleans himself up, I'll pray for him, he got himself together, I'll type him. She's over here at the exam table, three and a half years old, let me stand up here. <laughs> and all of a sudden she said, that was a girl. Oh. Three and a half, four years old, I said, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much yesterday, but I'm learning some stuff today. That's right. Yeah. Symptoms. Mm -hmm. I didn't cast it out, but what I did do was this. 
I walked up to her and put my hand on her face and I said, you sweet little child. Yeah. In the powerful name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. I don't remember exactly what I said. Mm, that's right. Sweet, sweet spirit. Grab a hold of this little bed. Bring cleansing to this it's your life, that your spiritual life fills. Yes, yes. yes. I claim her soul. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. I go back to my seat. I didn't even realize that she must have took my pen when I wasn't looking. When I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and she sits there with it in her hand, and she walks up to me, and she says, give it back to me, please. And then she said some kind of term to me. Holy Spirit, have your way. Mm -hmm. yes, You're a vessel. Come on. You are a vessel. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit wants to consecrate you. He wants to see people bring it out by that word activate. Look, I know they got to go. <laughs> Holy Spirit, now I don't know what we talk about. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The real Mary, 
She's turning over in her grave every time somebody tries. She's like, I can't help you. Come on now. You <laughs> better go to my son because guess what? I can't help you. That's right. That's right. I can't help you. I didn't die for you. The Catholic Church is lying. Listen, I'm not here to offend anybody. Y'all, if y'all think that I'm, if y'all think I'm a rogue preacher, and I'm here to offend people, and I hate my heart towards Catholics. You are wrong. I was born a Catholic. My mama raised me Catholic. I was taught how to pray that 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 beaded Babylonian beaded thing. I know you ain't supposed to talk like that. But I'm gonna tell you the truth. Babylonian beads, my friend. This stuff been around. I can look. I'm not going there. That's not what my message is. What I'm trying to tell you though is this, is that Jesus was the only one. That ascended into heaven. That's right. Jesus is the only one that was born without sin. That's right. Oh, that's right. What do they call it? I'm showing the uh, what is the word? About the, the Catholic Church teaches that this happened to Mary. The Immaculate Conception. Huh? Immaculate Conception. Tricky trick. Tricky trick. Slippy slick. Wiles and methods. Schemes and tricks. They, you think they talk about Jesus when they say Immaculate Conception. No, 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 no. They talk about Mary. That's right. Oh they talking about Mary. False. They talk about Mary ascended in that. Come on. Her spirit is with you. Mm. That's right. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Mary turns over the grave. Whatever this lion, Luciferian spirit has reinvented itself and used to be called Ishtar out of Babylon, used to be called Adonis or whatever that her name was in Greek, Greek culture, reinventing himself. Time after time, spirit of Jezebel, spirit of Antichrist, revealing himself in a lying way. Come on. The real Mary don't have nothing to do with it. Come on. That's right. That's another right. story. Look at these words. Unfeigned love, pure heart, born again, not a corruptible but incorruptible seed. The word of the Lord, the living word, became flesh. Yes. And dwelt in us. Yes. And when he died, and the truth is preached, and you believe the incorruptible seed of the living word takes residence in your heart. Oh, You're born again in the incorruptible seed. The very life of Jesus is on the inside of you. It's not going to fade away. Amen. It's going to endure forever. I just want to focus on this one thing, singers, musicians, all can come. We're about to get into the presence of the Lord. We're going to take communion together. Amen. Amen. I want to focus on one little thought right here before we finish. Unfeigned love. Yeah. Unfeigned love for the brethren. What does unfeigned mean? It means without hypocrisy. You know what the word hypocrite means? You know what the word hypocrite means? It means like an actor on a stage with a mask. Let your love for your brother and your sister be unfeigned. Let your brother love for your brother and sister be without hypocrisy. No more can we afford to fake it till we make it. Without the unity of the brethren, without us being of one mind and one accord, we will grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We will hinder the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit of God. And we, each of us, will be partially responsible for people not getting their breakthroughs, for people not receiving deliverances, so all I'm asking you to do mm. is to let God do business with our hearts. That's, what God That's right. Amen. The same thing I got to do that I'm about to do. I'm going to let him do business with my heart. I'm going to ask him, Lord, oh, please protect my heart. Yes. And bitterness not for me. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I love the, the people of God. And I want it to be real. Amen. Unsane, unhindered.
Check it at the door, my friend. Check it at the door so that when you come in.